it is anterior waveline. Now, in this video, we want to look at the continuation of development of central nervous system. You know, the central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. In my previous video, I've talked about development of the brain and its critical structure. Now, today, we want to look at development of the spinal cord. If you remember, there is a particular structure that is giving rise to the brain and the spinal cord, which is the what? Neural tube. Now, when we have the neural tube, this is the neural tube. Yes, so this is the newer tube. If you remember, the complete formation of the newer tube occurs at day 25 and day 27, respectively. Now, this newer tube, the cranial part of the newer tube will give rise to the brain, and the caudal part of the newer tube will give rise to the what? Spinal cord. So, our major concern in this video is that we are looking at the caudal part of the newer tube. Because it is the counter part of the neural tube that will give rise to the what? To the spinal cord. I get what I'm saying now. Now, how the development of spinal cord undergo? That's what we want to look at. Now, if you look at a cross section of the spinal cord, when you look at the internal part of the spinal cord, that is where you can evidently understand how the development of spinal cord looks like. Because development of spinal cord takes place around the third and the fourth week of development. Are you getting my point now? So when we undergo a cross section, a transverse section of the caudal part of the neural tube, that is where we can understand vividly how the development of spinal cord looks like. Now, if you look at this caudal part of the neural tube, they are made up of cells. The cells are what we call the word neuroepithelial cells. I get what I'm saying now. If you don't forget, the wall of the outer part of the neural tube is made up of what? Neuroepithelial cells. You get so when you undergo a cross section of the spinal cord, which is the outer part of the neural tube, that is where you notice that the presence of cells that make up the outer part of the neural tube, which is the neuroepithelial cells. Now you need to know that during the development of spinal cord, the neuroepithelial cells divide, they proliferate rapidly. And when they divide, they begin to constitute one another and give rise to what we call neuroepithelial layer. So this is what we call the neuroepithelial layer. Yes. So this is what we call the what? Neuroepithelial layer. Neuroepithelial layer. So the neuroepithelial layer is formed as of combination of rapid proliferation of neuroepithelial cells. I guess what I'm saying. Now, due to continuous proliferation of the neuroepithelial cells that make up the neuroepithelial layer, they give rise to a primitive cell. That primitive cell is what we call the word neuroblast. So the neuroblast is coming from the neuroepithelial cells that make up the neuroepithelial layer. So the neuroblast that is formed as a result of neuroepithelial cells we form the mantle layer. The mantle layer is now a zone around the neuroepithelial layer. So let me use this as the mantle layer. So this, so this part here is what we call the word mantle layer. I get what I'm saying. So the neuroblast coming from the neuroepithelial layer we give rise to the word mantle layer. Now, as a result of nerve fibers arising from the neuroblast, from the mantle layer, it also gives rise to a zone around the mantle layer. And that zone is what we call the word marginal layer. So this is the last layer. Do you get it? This is the last layer. So the last layer is the outermost layer of the spinal cord. And this layer is what we call the word the marginal layer. So in the development of the counter part of the neural tube, which is the spinal cord, there are three layers that have been formed, the neuroepithelial layer, the mantle layer, and the what? Marginal layer. I get what I'm saying now. So which particular cell make up the mantle layer? It is the what? Neuroblast. Neuroblast. But which nerve cell make up the marginal layer? The nerve fibers arising from the what? Neuroblast. Yeah, so let's do this as the one nerve fibers. I get my point now. 
So please, let's continue. So we want to look at how the development of spinal cord takes place. As a result of addition of more and more neuroblasts to the mantle layer. You know, the mantle layer is made up of neuroblasts. You are now adding more of neuroblasts to the mantle layer. Do you know what will happen? There will be a bilateral thickening of the one mantle layer. Now, this is how it looks like. Yeah, so this is our this is our neuroepithelial layer. Yes. Now, as a result of addition of more and more neuroblasts to the mantle layer, what happens? There is a bilateral thickening form at the dorsal part and the ventral part of the world, mantle layer. So this is the thickening. So it is represented by this. Yes. And now we have this to be the what? The marginal layer. So this one in red is what we call the what? Neuroepithelial layer. This one is what we call the what? Mantle layer. And this is what we call the what? The marginal layer. So we all know that this is the what? Neuroepithelial layer. This is the mantle layer. And this is the marginal layer. But due to more and more addition of the neuroblast to the mantle layer, that is when the mantle layer begins to undergo bilateral thickening at the dorsal and ventral part. So this bilateral thickening at the dorsal part of the mantle layer is what we call the what? The ala plate. What I call it? Ala plate. Yes. Okay, let me use this. We call it the word a la plate. Why the dorsal, why the ventral thickening of the mantle layer is what we call the word basal plate. Are you getting my point now? So the ala plate and the basal plate is also part of the mantle layer. Are you getting what I'm saying? But because the mantle layer has undergone thickening, that is why it forms the ala plate and the basal plate. So it is believed that the ala plate, which is the dorsal part of the mantle layer, will later become our what? Posterior gray on. Why the basal plate will become our what? Anterior gray on. I get what I'm saying now. That is what you need to know about development of the spinal cord. Because the inner plate will later become our posterior gray on. Why this will become our anterior gray on? Yes. Now, can we continue? Now, there is a particular point that you need to know. There is this point here. This, there, there is a longitudinal groove between the inner plate and the basal plate of the mantle layer. This groove is here. I get what I'm saying. The groove is made up of small collection of neuroblasts. And it is around this particular point. You get around this point. You get so this point serves as the boundary between the inner plate and the basal plate. This point is what we call the word sulcus limitans. So, of course, what? Limitants. So, what is surface so limitants? It's a longitudinal group that marks the boundary of the ala plate and the basal plate. Now, anterior to the surface so limitants, there are collection of small neuroblasts. You get around anterior to it. So, when there's collection of small neuroblasts anterior to the surface so limitants, it is going to give rise to the word lateral plate or intermediate plate, which will later become the word intermediate grade or or the lateral grade or. So this part here, that is anterior to the surface limitants, will become our word intermediate plate. Intermediate word, plate. And the intermediate plate, you get, we contain the, it will later become the word lateral grade or. I get my point now. Now, something I need you to know is that, you know, this is the mantle layer, which is the ala plate and the basal plate. So the mantle layer will later become the gray matter. That is why this dorsal part of the mantle layer becoming the what? Is forming the ala plate that will later become our posterior gray on. Why this part here, which is the basal plate, will later become our what? Anterior gray on. So collectively, it will form the what? Gray matter of the what? Spinal cord. 
I guess what I'm saying. Why this marginal layer will later become our world? White matter of the world, spinal cord. I get my point now. Yeah, so this is the intermediate plane that is present anterior to the circus limiters. Do you get now? So this intermediate plane will later become the lateral gray cord. I guys get my point now. Now there's a particular area at the dorsal part and ventral part of the world, mantle, mantle layer, that is devoid of neuroblast. So this is the point here. So this point here is devoid of neuroblast at the dorsal midline and the ventral midline of the world, mantle layer. So at the dorsal midline of the ala plate, there is a particular area which we call the what? Roof plate. Why are the ventral midline of the basal plate? There's a particular area here devoid of neuroblast. This is what we call the word floor plate. I get what I'm saying now. This plate serves as potential pathway of nerve fiber, crossing from one side to another. Do you get so this part of the inner plate and basal plate that is devoid of neuroblast is what we call the roof plate and the floor plate, respectively. Now let's continue. Now, this is how the future adult spinal cord looks like. Yes, yeah, so it is something like this. We have it to be like this. Yes, so this one. Yes, and then we have something that goes like this. Exactly. Now, so this is the future adult spinal cord. I get my point now. You see this one here is what we call the word neuroepithelial layer. Okay, so this is the neuroepithelial layer. The neuroepithelial layer. Which is made up of neuroepithelial cell. And this part here is what we call the central canal of the spinal cord. Now, you see this part here, which is the mantle layer, has become the word gray matter. Now, the dorsal part of the gray matter is what we call the word ala plate. Now, it has become here, which is called the word posterior gray on. Now, this part here of the mantle, mantle layer is what we call the word ala plate. Now, the ala plate now has become the word anterior gray on. Now, this part here is what we call the intermediate plate. I guess what I'm saying now. Now, the intermediate plate has now become the word lateral gray on. Are you guys getting my point? Now, now can you see now that the ala plate has become the word posterior gray on of the gray matter? Then the basal plate has become the word anterior gray on of the gray matter. And the intermediate plate has become the lateral gray on of the gray matter. Now, this is still our what? Neuroepithelial layer. And this is the central canal of the world, spinal cord. I guess what I'm saying now. And this one is what we call the word marginal layer that will later become our white matter. Now, let's continue. One thing you need to know is that there are some areas, like this, for example, the posterior gray on is made up of sensory areas. Do you get so the posterior gray on is made up of dorsal sensory roots. Why the anterior gray on is made up of the what ventral motor roots, motor areas? I guess what I'm saying now. So this lateral gray on is made up of the ganglionic sympathetic nervous system. You know, the pre ganglionic nervous system is around the thoracic region and the upper le lumbar levels. So around the thoracic region is around T1 to T12. And around the lumbar region, it's around L2 to L3. That is where we have the word lateral gray on that contains the pre-ganglionic sympathetic autonomic nervous system. Now, the next thing you need to know is what is the development of spinal nerves? You get so this is about the development of the word spinal cord because when you know that the inner plate will become the posterior gray on and the basal plate will become the word anterior gray on. Now, this intermediate plate will become our lateral gray on. And the posterior gray on contains the dorsal sensory root. This contains the word ventral motor root. And this contains the word pregaglionic sympathetic nervous system. And this collective name is what we call the white matter. Sorry, the gray matter to be precise. And the marginal layer will become our white matter. Now, let's look at the development of spinal nerves. Spinal nerves that is coming, that is exiting from the word spinal cord. 
That is what we want to look at. Now, you need to know that there are 31 spinal lamps. I get what I'm saying. Yes, there are 31 in number. And then, the spinal lamp is coming from the ala plate and the basal plate. Though, I told you that the ala plate, which will later become our posterior gland, is made up of the what? Dorsal sensory root. Why this one is made up of the what? The basal plate is made up of the ventral motor root. So the combination of both the dorsal sensory root and the ventral motor root will give rise to our spinal naps. Do you get it? It is going to give rise to the trunk of spinal naps. That is what makes up the spinal nap. That is why spinal nap is made up of ventral motor areas and dorsal um, sensory areas. I get what I'm saying. Spinal cord behaves. It's under, it has both sensory neurons and motor neurons. I guess what I'm saying now. Now, let's say, for example, this is the what? Neuro epithelial layer. Yes. And then this is our ala plate. And this is our what? Basal plate. And then we have this to be our what? Marginal layer. So, once look at how the spinal nerves develop. Now you need to know that in the basal plate, the ventral motor root is formed by the basal plate. Why the dorsal sensory root is not formed by the what? Ala plate. So that's to tell that it is the neural crest cell that gives rise to the dorsal sensory root. But later on, the dorsal sensory root will situate itself within the what? Ala plate. But it is the basal plate that gives rise to the what? Ventral motor root. Are you guys following me? Now let's continue. Now, in the development of spinal nerves, I'm going to be explaining development of dorsal sensory roots and development of ventral motor roots. So the combination will give rise to the development of spinal nerves. So let us start with the ventral motor roots. Now, if you don't forget, we want to look at formation of ventral motor roots. Within the basal plate, because it is the basal plate that will form the word ventral motor roots, this plate is made up of a primitive nerve cell, which we call the neuroblast. I guess what I'm saying now. Before, the neuroblast is, the neuroblast has a central lumen with a transient dendrite. Let's say this are the dendrite. I guess what I'm saying now. But as time goes on, what happens to the transient dendrite? The transient dendrite disappears. I guess what I'm saying. They disappear. On reaching the word basal plate, you know the neuroblast is coming from the neuroepithelial cell. So before, when the neuroblast is in the neuroepithelial cell, it has a central lumen with a transient dendrite. But immediately it migrates into the word basal plate. What happens to the dendrite? The dendrite disappears, and as a result of that, the neuroblast is round and apolar. So this is what we call the word apolar neuroblast. Yes, apolar word neuroblast. So this is what we call a polar neuroblast, which is present within the world, the basal plate. With further differentiation of the epolar neuroblast, you know what happens? The epolar neuroblast will form two poles, which is the bipolar world neuroblast. It is now seen to be like this. Yes. So this is what we call the world bipolar neuroblast. Also situated within the word basal plate. Before it was a polar, which means it has no pole. But right now it is what bipolar, having a many poles, two poles, which is the word dendrite and the word axon. With further differentiation of the bipolar neuroblast, do you get the there is now a cytoplasmic extension of this pole. Do you get so this pole will now later become the word primitive. Axon. And this dendrite that appears to be one will be many. There will be cytoplasmic arborization. It will become like a tree like. So it will not become something like this. Yes. I guess what I'm saying. Now the pole has become many. This is the dendrite. I guess what I'm saying now. So this now will become our dendrite. Why this one will become our what? Axon. So this is what we call our multipolar neuroblast. Now, can you see the differentiation of neuroblasts so that they can give rise to the ventral motor roots? At first, it is what? A polar. 
From apolar, it becomes what? Bipolar. Now from bipolar, it becomes what? Multipolar. Having dead right and what? Axon. I get what I'm saying now. So this multipolar neoplasm later becomes our mature ventral motor roots coming from the world, basically. Now look at it now. So this is our um, mature neoblast. I get what I'm saying now. This is our mature neoblast. Do you get? This is our ventral motor root now. Do you get? So this is our motor neurons that is coming from the world, basically. Though there are many in number. There's another one that comes like this. Do you get? So there are many. Collectively, the motor neurons will become the world, ventral motor root. I get what I'm saying. So that's to tell you that the basal plate give rise to the ventral motor root. I get what I'm saying. So let's continue. Now we want to look at development of the dorsal sensory root. So that when the sensory root and the motor root combine, they give rise to the word spinal nerves. Now you need to know that it is not the alar plane that forms the dorsal sensory root. What forms the dorsal sensory root is the neural crest cell. So this is the neural crest cell. You know, if you remember, the neural crest cell is located outside the spinal cord. I get what I'm saying now. So it is the neural crest cell that gives rise to the dorsal sensory root. How? Now, within this neural crest cell, there's something we call the dorsal root ganglion. The neural crest cell will give rise to the dorsal root ganglion. So from the dorsal root ganglion, this is what we call the dorsal root ganglion. Coming from the red neural crest cell. Now, the dorsal root ganglion has two process, a centrally going process and a distally going process. So this is the centrally going process. It comes like this. Yes. So these are the two processes of the dorsal root ganglion. A distally going process and a central going process. You get it? So this centrally going process, what will happen to them? They are going to penetrate through this marginal layer and enter into the world, in our plate. Now look at it. This centrally going process is going to penetrate through the marginal layer and enter into the world, in our plate. Now, can you now see that it is not the inner plate that forms the dorsal sensory root? Because this is what we call the dorsal sensory root that is coming from the world, dorsal root ganglion. So the dorsal root ganglion has two going process of the dorsal sensory root. This is the centrally going process that will break through the marginal layer and enter into the world, inner plate. And a distally going process of the dorsal sensory root, of the dorsal sensory root that is going to communicate with the ventral motor root. So when the dorsal sensory roots communicate with the ventral motor roots, what do they give rise to? They give rise to what? Spinal nerves. Are you guys getting what I'm saying now? So can you now see that the dorsal sensory root is coming from the what? Dorsal root ganglion. And where is the dorsal root ganglion coming from? The lacrosse. Now the dorsal root ganglion, this gives rise to the dorsal sensory root. So part of the dorsal sensory root will go into the what? Ela plate. While some part we communicate or got connected to the ventral motor root to form the trunk of spinal nerves. So that is how spinal nerves are being formed. It is says that the dorsal sensory root and the ventral motor root will combine together and they give rise to the spinal nerves. And what happens? The spinal nerve will exit the vertebral column by passing through the what intervertebral foramina. And when they pass it through the intervertebral foramina, the spinal nerves will give rise to the anterior lemmae and the posterior wall lemmae. So it is the posterior lemmae that innervate the dorsal axial musculature, the vertebral joint, the skin of the back, and so on and so forth. Why the ventral motor root is one that innervates the majority of the muscles of the human body. I get what I'm saying now. So that is how we have the formation of the spinal nerves. Now let's look at development of the neuroglia cells, the glia cells. Yeah. So once you look at the glial cells, when we talk about the glial cells, the glial cells are non neuronal cells that provide support and protection to the what? To the um, neurons, which is the nerve cells. Those are the function of the neuroglial cell or the glial cells. So once you look at how it develops, if you don't forget that the neuron epithelial cell is the one that divides to produce the neuroblast. So that we can have the formation of this spinal nerves. But once the production of the neuroblast by the neuroepithelial cell cease or stop, that is where the formation of glial cell will occur. 
Are you guys getting my point now? Immediately, the new epithelial cells give rise to the neoblast. They lose their ability to divide. So once they cannot divide, and once they stop producing neoblast, that is when they give rise to the glial cell. So what you need to know is that when the new epithelial cell cease or stop producing the neoblast, you get when the new epithelial cell migrates into the world, mantle layer, it gives rise to what we call the fibrillar and postoplasmic astrocyte. You know what are the neoblast cells I want to be talking about? We have the astrocyte, we have the oligodendrocyte. We have the microglia cells, and we have the what? Ependymal cells. So these are the major four glia cells of the world nervous system. So how is the astrocyte form? I told you that when the production of the neuroblast by the neuro epithelial cells cease, that is when it will produce what we call glioblast. So it is this glioblast that will be giving rise to these what cells. Now, when the glioblast enters the mantle layer, it forms the what? Astrocyte. We call it fibrillar and protoplasmic astrocyte. Immediately, the glioblast migrates to the marginal layer. It forms the what? Oligodendrocyte. Now, can you see? The glioblast begins to migrate from one layer to another to give rise to the what? Glial cell. So, when the glioblast migrates to the marginal layer, that's when it becomes the what? Oligodendrocyte. And what is oligodendrocyte performing? It is one secreting the myelin sheet that will encapsulate nerve fiber, that will encapsulate axons. Now, when the myelin sheet encapsulates the fibers, do you get these nerve fibers? That is when the marginal layer will later become the word white matter. Are you getting my point now? So, that is the function of the oligodendrocyte cell. Now, the microglia cell is not coming from the new epithelial cell. It is believed that the mesenchymal cell give rise to the what? Microglia cell. You know, microglia cells are highly phagocytic in action. Do you get That is their own function. And the last cell is what we call the what? Ependymal cells. Do you get The ependymal cells which line the central canal of the spinal cord. Though, when the formation of the neuroblast and the glioblast cease, do you get When the neuroblast cease to produce those two, when the, new, when the new epithelial cell cease to produce the glioblast and neuroblast, that is when it gives rise to what we call the word ependymal cells, which will lie in the word central canal of the word spinal cord. So that is how we have the formation of the word glial cells. Now, in this video now, the last thing we want to be talking about is the positional changes of spinal cord. Yes. So let's look at the positional changes of spinal cord. Positional changes positional changes of spinal cord. Yes. We need to know that in the third month of life, during the development of spinal cord, when we undergo a longitudinal wide section of the spinal cord, the spinal cord develops with the same relative length as the embryo. So let's say this is the one, the spinal cord. The spinal cord is enclosed by the word vertebral column. So this is the vertebral column. Let's say this is the vertebral column. You get so the spinal cord and the vertebral column they have the same relative length in the third month of life. I guess what I'm saying now in the sense that the spinal cord, the spinal nerves coming from the spinal cord, we exist the intervertebral foramina at their level of origin. But with further increasing of age, during the fifth to seventh month, what happens? The vertebral column begins to become lengthened than the what? Than the spinal cord. You know, before, both the spinal cord and the vertebral column, they have the same length. But as a result of increasing age, what happens? The vertebral column grows more rapidly than the spinal cord. When the vertebral column grows rapidly than the spinal cord, what happens to the spinal cord? The spinal cord begins to ascend to an higher level. You get as they begin to ascend at best, the spinal cord has reached the level of what L2. Now, let's say this is the level of the spinal cord now. So, this part is the word L2 or L3. I get what I'm saying now. So, before both the spinal cord and the vertebral column have the same relative length, 
But due to increasing age, around the fifth to seventh month, what happens? The vertebral column grows more rapidly than the what? Spinal cord. And as a result of that, the spinal cord begins to ascend. And at best, the spinal cord has reached the level of L2 or L3 vertebrae. I get what I'm saying now. So, it is believed that at this point, the spinal nerves that is coming from the spinal cord passes obliquely and leaves the intervertebral foramina at their corresponding vertebrae. You know, before, immediately the spinal nerve leaves the spinal cord. They passes through their segment of poison. But now, the spinal nerve passes obliquely. You get the passes underneath their corresponding vertebrae. That is what you need to know about positional changes of spinal cord. Now, at puberty, at adolescent stage, we, are, we now see that this spinal cord begins to lengthen more. It says that it is now located at the level of L2 vertebrae. That is why you have the conus medullaris to become to be at the L2 vertebrae. I guess what I'm saying now. And that, you know, around the inferior part of the world, spinal cord, there is a thing like extension, which we call what? Phylum terminale. So this one called what? Phylum terminale. It is believed that the phylum terminale connects the conus medullaris at the level of L2 to the posterior border of the cosidia vertebrae. You know, this is the causes, the cauda part of the vertebrae. Okay, so it is this phylum terminal that marks the tract of the aggression of spinal cord. Tell you that that is the point at which the spinal cord aggresses, or the point at which the spinal cord stops. I guess what I'm saying now. So this is what we call the positional changes of spinal cord. In the sense that both the spinal cord and the vertebrae, they have the same relative length. As a result of increasing age, the vertebral column lengthens. And as the vertebral column is length lengthening, what happens to the spinal cord? They begin to what? To ascend to an higher level, becoming shorter. Now, at the level of L2 to L3 vertebrae, that is where they terminate, where we are doing um, at best. But during adult life, it ascends more and terminates at the level of what? L2 vertebrae. So the conus medullaris of the spinal cord, which is the terminal end of the spinal cord, is at the level of what? L2. Some people believe that it's at the level of even L1 or L2 vertebrae. You get now at the conus medullaris as well. There's a particular nerve root coming from here. You get now that nerve root is what we call the word cauda equina. You get now this one called the word cauda equina. So the cauda equina is the collection of nerve roots that's located at the terminal end of the spinal cord. You get so that is about development of spinal cord and its associated structures please don't forget that at the end of this video there's always a practice question you get that can make you understand vividly what development of spinal cord is all about please don't forget to like and subscribe it's anterior